episode of History Gets Real. I am your host, Greg Getz. Now, today I'm going to talk about what you would say Vikings, but I'm going to set the record straight. We're going to talk about the Northmen. Now, the reason why I say that is because they are not actually called Vikings. This is just a common misconception, mistranslation of what Viking really means. What Viking actually means is to raid. So the Northmen, which is Denmark, uh, Norway, Sweden, these areas where they originate from, they would go a Viking. They would go raiding. They would go pillaging. So Viking is actually a word for raiding. That's where it comes from. They are not actually called Vikings. And like I said, they it was Norway, Denmark, and Sweden. So Norway, you would call them Norsemen. You would call Denmark the Danes. And Sweden, the Swedes. So that is just something that I wanted to clear up before we get more into it. They aren't Vikings, they're Northmen. Another misconception that is believed is that they wore horned helmets they had horns of animals on their helmets this is completely false there's no archaeological evidence of them having horned helmets this was a misconception that originated from an opera composed by Wagner where the Vikings in his play wore helmets with horns on it animal pelts and such like that they did wear animal pelts you know Scandinavia is a pretty cold place so it is not within reason that they didn't wear pelts. Obviously, you want to keep warm. This was also a time when they didn't really have stone buildings or metal buildings or anything like that. It was mainly thatch and wood and stuff like that. So any little bit to try and keep yourself warm during the harsh winter months, pelts were definitely a thing. That's that's completely true. If they did wear helmets, it was more than likely they wore leather caps or round metal helmets. Yeah, no no horned helmets. That's just basically like a fan fiction kind of thing. So yeah, let's let's get right into this. Northmen are cool to read about. I have read quite a few books about them. I'm sure some of you have seen the TV shows that revolve around them. You have Norsemen, which is a comedic take on the Northmen and like the Vikings TV show. You also have the Vikings TV show, which is one of my personal favorites. It is awesome. The acting is superb action is great story is remarkable and then you also have last kingdom now i have not personally seen this one i've tried watching it a few times but i've never actually sat down and tried to fully watch it but i'm going to give it another try so that is another one that you should check out i'm going to reference vikings quite a bit just to try and give you a little bit of you know recognition for something that might make sense to you because it you know like I said, that's a show that I've watched, and I've watched it quite a few times. It's really good. So yeah, let's let's jump right into it. Northmen. Like I said, they're from Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland. They didn't really have a serious kingdom. Like They weren't all attached to one kingdom. It was multiple little different kingdoms here and there. Some of the most notable kings that come from that time were uh, Ragnar Lothbrok, who the show Vikings revolves around, and then his children. Uh, one of them was King Björn of Sweden. Um, in the show Vikings, his name is Björn Ironside. He is Ragnar's oldest son. We don't really know how many other sons he had. We do know of Björn, and we do know of Uba Lothbrok, and Ivar the Boneless. Now, he was called Ivar the Boneless, for possibly a couple different reasons. The translations weren't specific on why he was called boneless. So either he did have a some kind of disease where his bones and his legs were uh, messed up and he was a uh, paraplegic, or it could have also stood for impotence. Like he could not, you know, get it up in the bedroom and please the ladies. So we don't really know for sure why he was called a boneless, but regardless of whatever ailment he had, he was also a very famous and well-known Northman from his time. He was a brilliant military tactician, a little on the insane side. The show Vikings does get that pretty right, but he was a formidable leader. 
yeah, I think we can just give him the praise that he deserves, you know? So one of the most notable actions that were committed by the Northmen was their raid of Lindisfarne. It was a church in England. This was their the first record of them going to England. They raided it, killed the monks and people that were at this church, stole all of the treasures and crosses and stuff like that. They went back quite a few times. They invaded Ireland. They invaded Scotland. They invaded other parts of England. They set up their own settlements. They even took over the city of York for an extended period of time. And if you can trace your lineage back to England, then you can more than likely trace some of your lineage back to Scandinavia. I, for one, can. I do have a lot of ancestors that come from Britain and Scotland and Ireland. And then some of my lineage does come from Scandinavia. So more than likely, I had some female ancestor that you know, may have met and had an unfortunate meeting with the Northmen. I'm not going to go into detail. I think we can all use our imagination of what that entailed. Or she was very impressed. Because here's something that you would not really think of when it came to the Northmen. Now, when you think of Northmen, you think of big, hairy, and, you know, dirty, rotten raiders and pillagers, and they smell like ass, and, you know, we're just going around killing people for fun. While they may have been killing people for fun, by ancient standards or, you know, medieval standards from the time that they were in, they were some of the more well-kempt people, and they were also one of the people that had a better hygiene as far as Western Europe. They took care of their beards very well. They took care of their hair very well. They actually, we have actually found archaeological evidence of them possessing combs and brushes and stuff like that you know to take care of their hair and you know make themselves look good uh we have found some bottles that contain like herbs so they might have actually used a type of uh cologne or perfume to make themselves smell better they bathed at least once or twice a week which is more than what we can say for englishmen now these Englishmen, from what we have read, is they were disgusting. Smelled like ass on a daily basis. They didn't bathe regularly. They didn't brush their teeth. They didn't comb their hair. They basically just rolled out of bed, had a glass of ale, and said, let's get this day going. You know, sleeping with the pigs. It's just awful stuff. Awful stuff. You could take my word for it or not. Whatever. Go read some stuff about it. I encourage you to do that. But they just, they were not very hygienic people. And these Northmen came to England and, you know, they're doing their business. They're pillaging. They're trying to set up settlements. And, you know, they're dealing with trading with the English people and stuff like that. So you got to imagine, you know, some little English woman sitting next to her husband who smells like ass and looks like ass. And then here's this big burly Northman coming up wearing a nice fresh pelt. He's got his hair all combed and braided. His beard is looking good. And he actually smells good. And it's just like, hmm, dang, how you doing, boy? You know, so obviously, you know, ladies, I think you can attest that you would probably prefer a man that smells a little bit better than someone who smells like cow shit, right? I think we can all agree on that. So not only were the Northmen raping and pillaging and, you know, taking women for prizes, but they were also wooing them with the fact that they had mediocre hygiene for our standards, but very good hygiene uh, at the time. The people who really had the best hygiene, though, in the ancient world were Muslims. They actually taught some of the Western Europeans and Northern Europeans about bathing and, you know, taking care of your hair, brushing your teeth, uh, cutting your hair, combing your hair, perfumes and colognes and stuff like that. We can owe some of our <laughs> beauty techniques that we have today to the Muslim world. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that our ancestors learned that from you because I could not imagine having to smell like shit on a daily basis. Maybe we would have figured it out on our own, but by the time the Muslims were building columns and pillars and great beautiful buildings in southern Spain, their northern counterparts in France and Germany were still living out of thatch houses made of mud, twigs, and shit. So who knows? <laughs> Alright, so back to the Northmen. 
So they set up shop inside of England. They had a couple settlements. Uh, they even took over the city of York for an extended period of time. And they ended up in Ireland, Scotland. They sailed across the ocean some more. They came across Iceland. They came across Greenland. And I'm going to tell you this. You can take my word for it or not, but this is the honest to God truth. They found America and its native inhabitants before Christopher Columbus, at least 400 years before Christopher Columbus got there. There are records of and archaeological finds of Northmen settlements in Newfoundland, Canada, or what they called it back then was Vinland. Now, obviously, these North America and South America, they had already been inhabited by its native inhabitants. I say discovered because it's from the Western aspect of it. I'm not trying to take it away from the native inhabitants whatsoever. They were clearly here first. Uh, there is some evidence that they migrated from Serbia or sorry, not Serbia, Siberia came across the land bridge in Alaska and Russia. And there is also some evidence back, you know, when the northern ice caps were still a lot farther south, you know, towards Greenland and such. There is also some evidence that was found on the east coast of possibly some people that migrated from France across this land bridge that connected Europe to North America. And we found some uh, arrowheads and spearheads and such that on the East Coast that match almost identically to arrowheads and spearheads that were found in France. So, I mean, if you got the ice caps that are down even farther south, it almost goes without saying that they probably migrated in search of food and they were following, you know, the ocean and fish and such like that, or maybe even tracking herds of animals across this ice bridge. So, I mean, it. It's possible. It is very possible. But in the thousands and uh, 1200s, we have evidence that there was a Northman settlement in Vinland or Newfoundland now. And they were here before Christopher Columbus. They intermingled with the native population. At first, it started off a little bit peacefully. You know, we don't know exactly what happened. Most of the writings and scholarly stuff that we have that points to this time, a lot of it is the uh, prose edas, poetic edas, and some small writings that we have found from uh, Northmen settlements that have been passed on. So it seems like they landed, they set up this nice little settlement in Vinland, and they intermingled with the native inhabitants for a while, but from what we have read or seen is that there was a little bit of a misunderstanding and a Northman killed a native inhabitant. And then a war broke out and eventually the Northmen were ran out of Vinland because they just did not have the manpower nor the tools to fight off this massive uh, native tribe. So they fled back to Iceland and uh, Scandinavia. But they were here before Christopher Columbus. Just gotta say that. Obviously there were people here before them, but Columbus can suck a dick. He was not the first. So... Some other notable people, the guy who was in charge of the expedition to Newfoundland was Leif Erikson. I'm sure you've heard that, especially if you have watched Spongebob. Hey, it's Leif Erikson Day! Hinga dinga dergen! That's him. It was that guy that, in his little group, that came to Vinland. It's pretty cool. So here's an interesting little tidbit that I really enjoyed reading about. So when you think of funerals today, you think of, you know, gathering at a church, gathering at a funeral home or a graveyard, and, you know, you're surrounded by your friends and families and family and loved ones, and you're all paying homage to this person, and you're sharing memories and pictures. Music is played, you lower the casket into the grave, you bury them, and then you carry on. You know, you pay respects to them every year, you bring them flowers and such. 
that's that's how we look at funerals now especially here in america i cannot attest to other countries so i am sorry if i am being insensitive or ignoring these other traditions that are upheld by other countries i'm sorry but i am just talking about what i know and what i am used to so that's why i'm you know relating to that now a northman funeral was a spectacle to behold i am sure of it and we actually have proof of what happened at a northman funeral so there was a story it was written by a muslim trader who came across some northmen in like a big settlement where trading was happening happening between all kinds of groups of people this Muslim trader, his, I am sorry, I am more than likely going to butcher his name, I apologize, but his name was Ahmed Ibn Fadlan, and he was a Muslim trader who went on uh, expeditions with a caravan to sell goods and buy goods from across the land. Now, like I said, Scandinavia had very harsh land, you weren't able to grow and produce many different types of crops, so a lot of what the Northmen had to rely on were their trade caravans as well as their raiding and pillaging. So, Ibn Fadlan writes about how he perceived the Northmen, and he even remarked on their hygiene. He said they were not the most hygienic, but as far as some other European uh, people, they were a lot better. And I mean, like I said, Muslim people were very good when it came to hygiene. So obviously he's going to find them very disgusting. And by our standards, they were disgusting. So he talks about how these group of Northmen, you know, they are big and burly and hairy and, you know, they share this communal bowl in which they all wash up. So the first guy throws his hands in there, throws the water over his face, his hair, and then he snot rockets into the water bowl passes it to the next person and they keep doing this in a circle so by the time it gets to the last guy you got like 10 other people's snot and spit and dirt blood whatever in this bowl of water that you were cleaning your face with and then snot rocketing back into it so i the first guy yeah he gets it good you know you get to snot rocket first and the water is clean but then as it goes on you're just putting in more spit and shit and vomit or not vomit sorry snot as it goes on so obviously Ibn Fadlan was like that's fucking disgusting Ugh. but they bathed uh more regularly than some other people like I said once or twice a week uh they all carried um herbs on them and flowers on them so that they would smell good and become appealing because obviously no one's going to buy from a dirty trader so you want to try and make yourself presentable so that people might want to buy your stuff and may want to do business with you at some point as well so the funeral a northman chieftain passed away in this encampment with all these other traders once he passed away they loaded up one of the one of their boats with all of this guy's possessions, his money, his swords, his goods, his horses, everything. They chopped off his horse's head and placed it in there. And I'll get I'm going to get to the reason behind all of this. Now what they also did was out of the women that joined them on this uh trade caravan, obviously some of them were concubines or slaves of some sort. So they asked the chieftain slaves which one of you wants to follow your master into the afterlife now from your time in school you probably remember reading about in ancient egypt how slaves and servants and goods were buried with the ancient egyptian pharaohs how they had a separate temple or separate chamber that was filled with uh, different people within the court so their goods and their possessions and uh slaves and servants as such northmen kind of had the same concept whoever you know you would have someone sacrifice willingly sacrifice themselves to die with this chieftain so that they can aid him and service him in the next life and it was considered a great honor so they asked these slaves which one of you wants to follow your master into the afterlife and this woman says i will so part of the ritual is she services all of the men within the caravan 
and you know what I mean by serviced, I don't need to elabor elaborate. She serviced all of the men within the encampment, and then on the final day, after the horses had his place in the boat, all of his possessions, they build a marvelous tent within it, and they put his body in there, they decorate him in all of his garb, and they have his sword and his crown, and you know, what have you. They just make the boat look beautiful they got flowers all on it and it's just filled with gold and goods and flowers and a dead horse's head so on the final day the shaman gives this slave girl a special drink she drinks it and she slowly starts to go insane now it's not specific what she was given it's more likely she was given some kind of a hallucinogen or some kind of a drug in a liquid form that made her kind of go a little wonky. So she drinks this drink. She starts, you know, going a little insane. They strip her down. They carry her into the tent. The guys who carried her get one last little hurrah with her while she's in this little state. And then they all gather around and they light the boat on fire. And it's a huge festival. You know, they're partying, they're dancing, they're celebrating, and they're just having a great time in honor of this chieftain and this girl's death. Now, Ibn Fadlan and his group were sitting there watching and observing, and they're talking to each other in their native tongue, and there's a Northman standing next to him, and he turns to Ibn, who was known as the translator, and he says, what are you guys talking about? And Ibn says, my friend here finds it very odd that you are burning your compatriot the way that you are usually in our culture we bury our dead and that's how we honor them to which the northman laughs and says oh you people you're so ancient and so archaic in your ways you bury your dead and you honor them by putting them in worm infested dirt to be feasted on my bugs we burn our dead and you can see their embers and ashes flying into the sky to be with the gods and he laughed at him so that's why they burned them, because they thought that their spirits would rise into the sky and they would be in the sky where the gods are. And the gods would be welcoming them and waiting for them in Valhalla. Now, Valhalla is a type, is like a version of heaven where the uh, Einar, which is um, fallen warriors, is what they're called. The Einar would wait and drink and be merry and, you know, fucking fight and have you know, a great debauchery of fun until the end of days, which was called Ragnarok. Ragnarok is when the gods will do battle and the earth will uh, be shaken and the great sea serpent Jormungandr is going to rise from the sea and do battle with Thor and Thor is going to fall in battle. Odin is going to be killed by the great wolf Fenrir and most of Midgard, which is earth, is going to fall to the chaos that ensues with Ragnarok. And a lot of the gods and goddesses are going to die, as well as the human population. It is a very, very dark tale, but it is something interesting. There are a few books that you can read that go into detail about Ragnarok and some of the gods. I'll probably, met, I'll probably do a separate podcast and talk about those stories and the gods and goddesses and stuff, because they are really interesting. Their gods aren't presented as... Uh, these omniscient, flawless beings. They are flawed, and their stories are meant to serve as lessons for how humanity is supposed to go on in life. And I mean, if a god or a goddess can make a mistake, then obviously you shouldn't beat yourself up for being, you know, for making one little mistake in your life. And that's a message that I kind of take from them. They're really interesting stories, and I'll do a separate podcast on those because there's a lot, and they're really fun. The Northmen Age began in the 700s when they first invaded Lindisfarne in England, and it carried on until about 1086. It was a massive final battle between the Northmen and the English, and they fought bravely, but the Vikings, or sorry, I keep calling them Vikings, it's just, you know, kind of programmed, but the Northmen ended up falling, and then after they fell most of the scandinavian kings and queens converted to christianity they gave up the old gods and it was seen as a way for them to gain power over those who served under them 
Christianity had, had a way of doing that. You know, if you look at all the kingdoms that were around at the time of the Northmen invading England, serfdom. You know, you had a bunch of peasants that were living in the fields and weren't, you know, were barely making enough to support their families. And the kings were just living in, you know, lavish castles and, you know, eating all the food they wanted and fucking all the women and men that they wanted to. And it was all because it was in the name of God. Women were forbidden to read because if a woman read, she was seen as a witch and it was the devil's work. And it was just a way to keep people subjugated and the kings and queens in power. It was a messed up system, but that it eventually got to Scandinavia and kings and queens converted to Christianity because they saw that it was a great way to attain power, keep power, and keep people in line without fear of retribution from the people. It was a messed up time. So they were very good warriors, but like I said, their main concern was farmers. That was their main job. They were farmers, they were tradesmen, they were, you know, they were family people. But that did not stop them from being great warriors. Now, they didn't have, like, a substantial military. It was more just a bunch of clans and tribes joining together to go a Viking and take over stuff and get as much gold and loot as they can. Women, slaves, food, whatever. But they didn't really have, like, a set single monarchy and control of everything. There was one time uh, in which Harold Finehair united all of Norway, but that did not last very long. He wasn't exactly the greatest king. And then you had Bjorn, king of Sweden. He ruled for some time, and he was a great warrior, but again, it did not last very long. Now, apart from their raids in England, like I said, they also went to Iceland, they found Vinland, they went to Greenland. They also, at one point, made their way down to France, they attempted to lay siege and take over Paris, but they failed miserably. Now, I commend them. They they succeeded in almost capturing, and ugh, they, they were just completely outmatched, outnumbered, and outsmarted by the French. And they eventually fell, retreated with their tail between their legs, and it was just a hard time for them. Big loss. You know, you go from all this success in England and, you know, setting up colonies and settlements and such, and then you go to France thinking that you are impervious, and then, boom, they kind of failed. But valiant effort, valiant effort, not enough, unfortunately. You see a little bit of this raid in the show Vikings, and obviously the show is going to be created and catered to a more dramatic effect and it's going to try and give you a more story-driven um, plot. But there's just no telling how it actually happened. We don't really have too much written down about what happened and how it went down. But you do see it in the show Vikings and it is very cool. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. The action scenes are very great. The story is awesome. Originally, the show was only supposed to have Ragnar Lothbrok in the first season, and then the rest of it was going to be catered to talking about his children. But because Ragnar and the actor who played him gained so much popularity that they actually extended the show a few more seasons to include Ragnar's story and his ascension from being a lowly farmer to becoming Earl of his little settlement to eventually becoming King of a couple different clans within Denmark, or sorry, Norway. And then eventually Ragnar, he ended up, when he went to France with a great army, he failed. And he went back to Norway and he was outcasted because he was seen as a failure. And he also, um, in the show it's depicted that he had a drug problem and that's why he failed. And then he went into hiding because he was ashamed. He eventually met his end in England. He went back and was killed by the king of Northumbria, who was called King Ayla. And then his sons sought retribution and vengeance in his name and killed King Ayla, killed King Eckbert of Wessex, and took over York and a couple other places. Now, it's I'm not sure if that's how it actually went down, but they did end up 
you know, they killed a couple kings, they took over a couple kingdoms, they did eventually take over York and set up a few settlements and such. So that part is true. If it was in the name of their father, Ragnar Lothbrok, I cannot tell you. I, there's just not enough evidence. Ragnar was kind of seen as more of a folk hero than an actual substantial person, just because we do not have enough writing or sources that credit him with the things that he did. The show Vikings is a very good action drama, and it, it kind of goes up there with Game of Thrones with the uh, play for the throne and the treachery and action and stuff like that. But I think it was a little better better handled than Game of Thrones, especially the final season, because we all know how that went down. Talk about disappointing. So this is just a little bit of a synopsis of the Northmen, and I just wanted, like I said, wanted to set a few things straight. They weren't actually called Vikings, that was more of an action rather than a name. They would go a Viking, they would go raiding. So you can, it's more appropriate to call them Northmen, Scandinavians, uh, Norse, Danes, Swedes. Those are their names, not Vikings. I think the funeral story is really cool. I like how their way of paying homage is different than a lot of other people, especially with the interaction between the Muslim traders. I think that gives a nice little cultural background and cultural difference between, you know, how different people perceive their way of honoring the dead, where the Muslim people believed that it was a better way to honor them by burying them in the earth, and Vikings thought that was a joke, and they said, we burn our dead so that their ashes can go into the sky and reach heaven faster than be ridden with uh, worms and such. So I think that is a really cool aspect. And then you had your famous people like Leif Erikson, who he and his group found Vinland as they were sailing across the ocean and came across the native inhabitants in Vinland and were eventually driven out due to a skirmish and them being overwhelmed. They found Iceland and inhabited it. They found Greenland. Uh, there were a few um, times that they raided and successfully set up settlements within England. They destroyed a couple kingdoms and even took over the city of York at one point. They marched down to France and attempted to take over Paris, but they failed. They had trade caravans that stretched all across uh, the Silk Road into all the way to Kiev, which is in Russia, down to the Mediterranean and Spain, England, and North America. And an interesting thing that I read a few months ago was that there is possibly archaeological evidence that there were Northmen that sailed to South America. They found remnants of what might be a Northman ship in Brazil. I think that is so cool. I have not seen too much more about it, but it is interesting. I mean, these guys were excellent sea navigators. They were ahead of their time, so to speak. And so the fact that they were able to travel across the Atlantic to England first, and then eventually North America, but if they were able to travel down to South America, I mean, that is just mind blowing. I, I, have to, I have to look it up some more just to see if it's true. But I did read that article that there might be remnants of a Northman ship in Brazil. And I think that is absolutely fascinating. Yeah, that's all I have on the Northmen. And I'm going to make a separate podcast to go into detail about their religion, which is Norse paganism. And I'll go into detail about the gods. I'll tell a couple stories from uh, some books that I have on them. If you want to take the take the liberty to read these books on your own, one that I definitely recommend is Neil Gaiman's Norse Mythology book. This book has a bunch of different stories that are, you know, that revolve around the gods and their time in Asgard and in between realms and such. And they're really, really cool and fun stories. It's, it's really fun. Um, I also recommend that you read the Prose Ada or the Poetic Ada and... There are a couple other books that you can read as well. There is the Havamal. The Havamal is a collection of phrases and teachings that were delivered by Odin. Odin was the is the uh, god of gods in Norse mythology. He is the father of the gods, and um, he is the All Father. Uh, he's basically the head honcho in Asgard. So yeah, I will do a separate podcast on them because I think that is a lot of fun and it can take a lot of time. I don't want to include it in this and 
you know, bore you with a long podcast. So I thank you all for joining me today, and I hope to see you next time, and I will deliver some more information on the Norse gods and Norse paganism. So thank you. Make sure you subscribe, hit your notifications for when the new episode comes out, and leave a review. I appreciate it if you leave a review on these podcasts to let me know how I'm doing, what you want to hear. So thank you all for coming, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.